Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a budget 350Z oil cooler. This is my current setup. I have the oil cooler there on the left and the transmission cooler on the right. And I was able to do this oil cooler for $85. And I would put it up against any of the nicer, more expensive kits that are costing $300, $400, or $500. It's just ridiculous. I've had this setup on my car for over a year. And then I had a slightly even more budget-friendly setup on it for two years before that. And had zero issues running this car hard for 30 minutes straight on track, keeping oil temps under 220. 25. It's been a great setup and I'm going to go through piece by piece how I was able to put it together. But I cannot take full credit for this. Main credit goes to Poor Man Mods when they did this video years ago. I've got a link in the description. I'll also put it up in the top corner if you want to go watch their original video. It's not 350Z specific, but it's where I got the inspiration from. I've just kind of tweaked it to work better for our cars versus the Sentra that they were installing it on. This is the main inspiration I got from them. It's the Durrell 15732 thermostatic sandwich plate. It is $30 right now from Jags. It is the right thread pitch to screw right into the side of the 350Z. It does come with the two barbs. The only problem is I think half an inch lines are too big, so I've got different barbs to put on there, and I'm using 3 eighths of an inch line. If you wanted to, you could also go ahead and screw in some AN lines. If I don't think it's necessary. I'm running rubber lines and I've had zero issues. The only thing you're going to have to change, and you don't really have to do this, it is just a good idea, is to go ahead and get rid of the factory oil cooler that comes on the car, and what you're going to need is the part off of the HR motor. It is called the oil filter stud. It is 10 dollars from z1 motorsports i've got a link in the description and what it does is it screws into that big tall gray stud there in the middle and that is what attaches it to the side of a car one on your stock car is tall almost exactly like that one to accommodate the factory oil cooler poor man mod figured out is because there's that little rectangle area over there on the left side where the thermostatic plate opens and closes, the regular 350Z size oil filter is just slightly too small. Each of those two little tiny corners is exposed and oil will go everywhere if you try to start the car with a regular filter on it. So you're going to have to run a different filter. Luckily, that filter is two and a half times as large as the extremely small 350Z filter. I've got a link in the description that shows all of the possible oil filters that will fit on this setup. I believe it is off an LT1 Corvette from the 90s, so it's not something you're going to be able to just go pick up at Walmart, but I've never had an issue getting it at a parts store. So as long as you go to a specific auto parts store, you can pick up this filter, just bookmark this cross-reference list, so no matter what brand they have on offer, you can find the right filter. The factory oil cooler, those two lines running in and out of it, what they are is coolant lines. So coolant goes into that little device. There's a bunch of fins inside of it with coolant on one side of the fins and oil on the other side. So as oil runs through that device in and out of the filter, it is transferring heat through those fins into the coolant. The problem is the coolant and the oil are usually at almost exactly the same temperature. Heat transfer likes temperature gradients. So you're not getting a lot of movement through there. It's really just for warming the oil up faster so that they get better emissions. It's not a performance device. It is an emissions device. It will hinder you on track. But what you're going to have to do is put on a shorter stud because once you remove that, there's going to be a gap that was taken up by this cooler that you're going to need to get rid of. The second reason we're getting rid of this is when you stack the oil cooler on top of this and the bigger filter we're gonna be running, you're gonna start to have a really tall stack of devices sticking off the side of your engine. And while you do have the room for all of it, it's just unnecessary. It makes things a little bit more difficult and tight in the engine bay than it needs to be for a device that we don't want anyway. So this is my main contribution over the one that's on poor man mods is because they were using the much cheaper design that has a tube snake through a bunch of fins whereas this is a much more expensive style design but it's only slightly more expensive you can get this right now in its largest size for 35 dollars off amazon or ebay or any number of places whereas the design they were using was $25. So you're only saving about $10, but this one is almost 50% more effective. It's a much better cooler, and it can stand up to the much more expensive coolers sold by 350Z specific retailers. You can see here up in the middle, there is your sandwich plate bolted to the side of the engine. So I got rid of that extra oil cooler, 
and bolted that directly to the side of the engine with that shorter HR stud versus the DE stud which is longer for that oil cooler. I changed out the two barbs of the smaller lines and you can see the two oil cooler lines coming out here and they're going to go under the core support, go into a 90 degree barb fitting and then go vertically up into this downward facing barbs of the oil cooler. Different angle, again it's up and to the left, you can see the sandwich plate bolted directly to the side of the engine. The two lines coming forward to go under the core support and then you have that larger oil filter attached to it. You can see just how much bigger that is compared to the tiny little factory filter. Here you can see the oil cooler on the left where it is mounted vertically directly to the core support. There is nothing attaching it to the radiator across the top. It's only the four bolts going across the bottom so that there's no vertical load trying to pull the fins apart but that big long plate across the bottom can handle the horizontal loads that it might be applied to. If you do attach it on the top and bottom bar, make sure you isolate it with some sort of rubber grommet so that when there's movement on the car, it's not pulling all the fins apart. Now, if you look to the right, you'll see the transmission core that's completely installed. At this point in time, I was still waiting on some barb fittings for the oil cooler, but I used the 90 degree fitting to make that turn straight up, and then I'm able to connect the barb fitting to the oil cooler. You could try to curve the lines, but it's a little bit of a sharp bend. I think the 90 degree fitting makes it a lot cleaner and smoother install. I've had zero issues with drops in oil pressure from the larger filter and adding the oil cooler. I can't tell any difference between pre and post install oil pressures. However, I can run all day on track without getting anywhere past 225 degrees unless it is just an extremely hot day and I'm really beaten on the car. Here's a price breakdown of everything. Like I said, sandwich plate, $30. You can get it all day for that price from Jags. The new barbs, you're probably going to spend about $10 for the 290 degree barbs and the two new barbs coming out of the sandwich plate. The oil cooler, you can get it for anywhere from $35 to $40. And then the filter stud, I've got a link in the description for that. It's $10. So make sure you get the one from the 350Z HR. That way you know you're getting the short stubby one that you need. But this brings our grand total to anywhere from $85 to $90. This original idea came from Poor Man Mod, so please support them. Go watch their video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.